We're getting a lot of work done these days and things are moving very quickly along. So I just wanted to give you a seedling tour and also talk about the seeds and how we're planting the garden this year for self-sufficiency before all of the seedlings just disappear outside into the garden. So the garden has kind of become my responsibility. We just try and divide the responsibility on the farm a little bit. Like Karen tends to the chickens a lot more and I help him when he needs help and then I manage the garden and then he helps me when I need help. So we're growing to become as self-sufficient as possible as long as it makes sense. Like we're not gonna grow our own grains and also this is just our second year so obviously we're not gonna be able to become self-sufficient yet. And um, we still have a lot of things to learn about preserving uh, for us to become self-sufficient throughout the entire year. But we did really well last year and we had fresh vegetables for around four or five months. This year my goal has been to prolong the growing season and harvesting season a lot. So I laid out all of our seeds here so let's just go through them. So first we have our salads. These are all of our like salad heads. Uh, we have all different types of romaines, greens and purple colors. This year I'm gonna have a continuous uh, supply of salad seedlings that I can plant out whenever a bed opens up. Because last year we just planted once and then we ate from those until they bolted. And then we didn't sow any more after that. But I want a lot of salads this year. And then we have all of our leafy greens. And we're gonna do the same with those, just plant continuously. And then we have our Asian greens, like pak choy, tzatzoy, um, Chinese cabbage, uh, there's some fennel and celery in here. And those I'm gonna plant, except for the fennel and celery, I'm gonna plant when it's too hot for the salads, like in July. Salads don't like it too hot, then they go to seed. And then we have our Swiss chards. Uh, these are just way too many for us, but I got a bit excited about all the colors. But uh, whatever we don't eat, we'll just give it to the chickens, so it will get eaten no matter what. And then we have our spinaches. Uh, we just grew one type of spinach last year, and I wasn't really that into it. It was New Zealand spinach. So this year I want to try a lot more varieties. And then we have our beets and radishes. I love making beet juice, so I really want to have a big harvest of beets this year and I have everything from like deep purples to whites to yellows to polka and then we have radishes and also just all types of colors pinks and purple and pink and white and red radishes grow so fast I'm just gonna continuously grow these throughout the summer and then we have our beans and peas and I've already grown peas out into the greenhouse and they're already like this tall uh, it's a cold hardy crop, so they're doing really well. And um, yeah, last year we only really grew Canadian sugar snap. It was seeds that Kieran brought from Canada and they did super well. And we harvested a bunch of seeds from them. But we're gonna grow even more varieties this year. And then we have our herbs. We love using herbs, both fresh and uh, dry them. We still have dried parsley and basil and oregano from last year. So here we have, you know, thyme, parsley, sage, basil, mint, tarragon, and then we have carrots. I'm really excited about growing carrots this year. We did grow them last year, but it didn't go that well because we uh, grew them inside first and then we transplanted them out. And you shouldn't really do that because then you get really wonky roots. So this year I'm just direct sowing and we have purple with an orange core. We have normal orange carrots, both summer and winter carrots. The winter ones I'm gonna store in the basement. So have every type of carrot. <laughs> Norwegians really like carrots, so it's also a good crop for us to sell. So I keep that in mind. Then we have other roots. I'm not really sure about the names in English. We just call it parsley roots and oat roots and black roots and then we have parsnip 
And I'm gonna do the same with them, just direct so. And then we have the um, vegetables that yield kind of a fruit, like tomatoes and chilies. I might have like 200 tomato plants this year. I have so many, maybe even more. But I hope to make enough tomato sauce to last us throughout the year because we eat a lot of tomato sauce. Yeah, and then we have chili pepper. They're not doing that well, but if they don't produce, I might just buy a plant from the garden store. I also planted aubergine and they're also not doing great, but it hasn't really been that hot yet. So if they don't produce, that's not a big deal. It's just something I wanted to try. And then we have cucumbers. And uh, last year I grew one type and uh, I'm amazed at how well it did. Uh, when I think about how badly I treated it. It was the last seedling that I planted outside and we were just so tired at that point and we were so behind. So I kind of just like threw it in the ground with some compost and just left it. And uh, I think one plant produced like eight, eight cucumbers. And then later I found four more plants in the pumpkin patch because I had mistaken them to be pumpkins. And uh, we got some out of those as well. But this year I'm gonna give them a little bit more attention. So I have white cucumber, I have sort of normal cucumber, and I have some cucumbers to pickle. And then I also am growing a loafa, which we're gonna dry, and then it's like a sponge that you can use for dishes or use in the shower. And then we have flowers. Didn't really grow any flowers last year except for sunflowers. So this year I'm gonna give that way more energy. We have a bunch of edible flowers and I have this Cosmo, Alyssum, Echinacea, Rudbeckia. I've never really been that into flowers, but the pollinators love them and it really makes a beautiful garden. So I'm gonna focus more on that this year. And then we have our onions and uh, this is the first year where I'm growing onions and it's gone terrible. <laughs> I've killed most of them. They're a bit tricky because they like really loose soil and also the roots rot very easily if uh, they're in, uh, in water or if you water too much. I tried sowing onions twice already this season. So I actually just caved and I got onion bulbs. But I also have a bunch of um, spring onion and something called salad onion and silver onion and also a bunch of leeks. And then garlic we sowed last fall and they're popping up already. So hopefully we uh, have a lot of garlic this year. We use a lot of garlic. I mean, Koreans half Indian. So um, we cook with a lot of garlic. And then we have our brassicas, and I'm growing a lot of kales and cabbages this year. Uh, we have green kale, we have red green kale, we have something we call palm kale or black kale. They're so decorative and also the chickens love them, so we can't really have enough kale. And the cabbages I use to ferment. I love to make uh, jars of fermented food. So I'm gr growing a bunch of different uh, cabbages. Purple, pointy cabbage, um, normal green cabbage, savoy cabbage, uh, Brussels sprouts, and also cauliflower and broccoli. I didn't uh, grow cauliflower and, bro and broccoli last year, so I'm really excited to try that this year. And the cabbages didn't do that well last year because we didn't have nets to protect them from the, the cabbage moth. But this year I have that, so I think they will turn out pretty good this year. And it's also a great crop for storage. I mean, um, cabbage will last months in the basement. And then we have um, squashes. And uh, last year we grew one type of summer squash and we had like eight plants and they produced so much fruit. We had way too many squashes. We were making squash bread and squash fritters and just anything you can think of because we had so many squashes and we didn't know what to do with them. And uh, this year I'm growing more. <laughs> but like I said, chickens will just eat anything that we don't eat. 
And then I have the crop that I'm probably the most excited about, uh, which is winter squash, because last year I developed this insane fascination for winter squash and pumpkins. So now I have seeds for over 40 types of winter squash, and I'm growing about 20 types, I think. We don't have that much space for pumpkins this year. Next year, when we have a market garden, I'm gonna set aside at least half an acre to a pumpkin patch. But yeah, so we have uh, gourds, which are super decorative. They're not edible, but they're really, really pretty. And I can't wait to decorate our house with the uh, gourds like this. And then I also have a bunch of huge ones like Crown Prince, Des Atlantic. Those are the huge ones that can get up to several hundred kilos. That uh, Jack-o'-lantern, which is like the typical Halloween pumpkin. Uh, Rondini, red curry. Red curry is great for eating. Uh, black cats. Baby Boo, New England Pie. There's so many pumpkins and I'm so excited. I invite you all to just call me the crazy pumpkin lady. I am totally fine with that. And then we have some seeds that we harvested ourselves. So we have a bunch of radishes and coriander. And we also have comfrey and bush bean and sh Canadian sugar snap and climbing bean, marigold, borage, some pumpkin seeds, grapes. Harvesting our own seeds is definitely something we're gonna focus more on this year and in the upcoming years because it is a big part of being self-sufficient, having your own seeds so you don't have to depend on stores having seeds or and you also don't have to spend money on it. So yeah, I think that's all we're gonna sow this year and uh, let me now show you the seedlings I have planted. Here I have some rudbeckia, celery, I have carrots growing in milk cartons, purple broccoli, more celery, I have some tiny strawberries, and spinach. These are some meter beans, it's called. They get like long red beans, very beautiful, but note to self, I'm not gonna grow beans inside. Next year, I'm just gonna grow them directly outside. And then we have some very sad onions. And then I have some celery that I bought at the store. It's looking really healthy. I want a lot of celery because I love making celery juice. And then we have some pumpkins that haven't come up yet. And here's my brassica tray. Here we have pak choy and we have cauliflower and we have palm kale some green kale at the back, some Brussels sprouts here. And then we have some more sad, I think there's a spring onion, not doing great. And then we have some uh, artichokes that I've grown uh, first time also with those. And then we have some more brassicas, some different cauliflowers and broccolis. And then we have a bunch of pumpkins. And then over at the dining table here, <laughs> I have more brassicas, more kale, I'm gonna give away a bunch of kale to friends and family, so I'm just growing a bunch. And here we have some onions that are looking way better. It's This is the second round of onions. And here I have some... We call this fusal. This in Norwegian. I think it's tomatillo. And here we have asparagus. Takes about four years before you actually get a asparagus stock. So very excited to just get that started so we have asparagus in four years. And more broccoli. And here we have some bush beans. And then all of this is just pumpkins that I sowed a couple of days ago. And I want to show you the green ass one more time because now I put so many more seedlings in there. We have some salads growing cucumbers. And then I have climbing tomatoes. The stuff that I direct sowed in the green as you've seen before, but it's really, really coming along. And then I have more tomatoes. And then I have some, it's called farmer's bean. I'm not really sure what it's called in English. And the uh, salads and beets, they were here before. And the uh, cabbages, and this is Swiss chard and salad. And here, I put some celery, which I'm also just dying to get in the soil. They're getting really pale. 
And then I have more celery that I just sowed because I killed so many of the ones I sowed in February. And here I have some celery and fennel that I bought at the store. That's why they look so great. And here I have more tomatoes. I sowed a bunch more because I thought I'd killed like half of my tomatoes because I put them out in the sun and forgot about them. So they all got really sunburnt and looked like they were struggling. But now they've all uh, regained their strength again. And then here we have corn. We have one sweet corn and one painted mountain. It's like this uh, multicolor corn. Corn is also something I'm just gonna sow directly next year. Most of the seedlings are doing pretty well now, but I've also had several rounds of taking out the dead or the dying seedlings and I've also repotted quite a few of them. I've had moments where I felt like such a failure because it just seemed like all of my seedlings were dying but it's going so much better now. I started a bit too early uh, this year. Even though I held myself back, I got really, I get really excited in the late winter to grow seedlings. But uh, I'm gonna start even later this year because you're kind of forcing this process to happen when the seeds and the plants know that it's not time yet. They don't really grow until they feel that the temperature and the weather is right. I think it's gonna be such an abundant year and we're gonna grow so much more than what you just saw. We're gonna direct sow a lot as well. So yeah, I am so excited. <laughs>